Sometimes bad headlines can create incredible buying opportunities. A month and a half ago, the Wall Street Journal published a story about Zoetis, a major player in animal health, uh, speculating that the arth arthritis drug, Librella, may have played a role in the deaths of several pets. Stock tumbled nearly 8% in response. Investors worried that Librella's domestic launch might be very disappointing. But when Zoetis reported three weeks ago, they delivered a terrific top and bottom line beat, crediting much of the growth to the widespread adoption of, you bet, Librella. The stock has now erased its losses from that story. It's still down roughly 13% for the year. Maybe it's worth a buy. Let's take a close look with Kristen Peck. She's the CEO of Zoetis to learn more. Ms. Peck, welcome back to Mad Money. It is great to be back, especially after such an outstanding quarter. Good to see you. It was an outstanding quarter, and obviously Librella is a major part of it. And this is a very big drug for you guys. Yeah, it had 189% growth in Q1. We are really excited. We did $100 million. So it's, you know, doing a fantastic job for osteoarthritis in dogs. And really the difference that it makes, you can watch all the videos of really the just the change you've seen in pets. I certainly saw it in my own. All right, that's fantastic. And we're, we're just TikTok videos, people posting things? Well, look, I think everyone sometimes looks for community, and I, I, my heart goes out to anyone whose pet is sick. But the reality is the overwhelming majority of, you know, pets and pet owners who have, you know, used uh, Labrella have had an outstanding experience, and that's been really, exper you know, really awesome. And the product is safe and efficacious. Perfect. It's been used for over three years with 14 million doses used. So we stand by the product, and it's been an Fantastic. awesome Fantastic. Now, you have been my expert for I, I, more than a decade now on these different illnesses like the uh, avian flu outbreak. I trust you more than anyone. Where are we? So I think what we've seen is, and you and I talked about before, um, oftentimes, you know, these zoonotic diseases or diseases that move animals, and we're seeing this, you know, high path avian influenza, which you and I talked about right. a little over a year ago um, in the birds, has now moved into cows. And, you know, as the leader in animal health, you know, with a purpose about nurturing the world and humankind, we're obviously partnering with both regulators and our, you know, uh, consumers, and importantly, our customers, to make sure we have solutions, both diagnostics and vaccines for it. So are you feeling confident right now about the situation? Well, I mean, I, I, the way I look at it, you know, I think our regulators are really doing a phenomenal job, to be honest with you. They're on top of it. They're looking at potential solutions, both biosecurity, um, looking at vaccines, looking at diagnostics, to make sure we can continue to control and address it. All right, good. Now, uh, yesterday, Walmart made an announcement, two days, Walmart made an announcement with Walmart Plus that they're going to do telehealth pet uh, medicine. And so immediately, my wise guy friend said, well, what are they going to do? The dog's going to be on the phone. But this matters, and it could matter for for your business. Well, I think what we're really seeing is lots of new business models around pet health care. Right. Um, there's a lot of new pets, as you know, who are adopted, and there's a great need. Pet owners today with the human-animal bond want to take better care of their pets, and they want to be able to get that pet care where that's convenient. So whether that be at Walmart or e-commerce or their local vet, they're looking at brand new value propositions to make sure all those Gen Z and millennials who want to, you know, treat their pets like family have the ability to do so. Now, uh, post the uh, pandemic, of uh, have, has there been any sort of, uh, uh, let's say, decline in the overall growth of, of having pets at home? No, not at all. And if you look at the pet care space and even the spend at pets, it continues to grow. In the last quarter, um, you know, the spend at the vet clinic grew four and a half percent. The reality is the human animal bond makes pet health essential. You know, if you asked, you know, 86% of Americans would not change what they spend on their pet, right. even if they were facing a 20% decline in their own income. So, you know, pet health is essential. Right. Now, we all have uh, our dogs and, and our cats uh, have peculiarities. Uh, I've got Wolfie, who is just driven <laughs> to distraction by uh, ambulance, by any loud noise. It kind of wrecks his day, so to speak. You've got something. Well, I mean, I, I think we've got a big weekend coming with all the fireworks potentially. Yes. Oh, yes. My, oh my God. That'll be so horrible. <laughs> so, yes. We do have a product uh, for dogs, Cilio, and we have Boncat for cats. And, you know, anxiety in dogs is very real. Um, certainly loud noises can really cause it. But you know, if you look at Boncat, a lot of, you know, pet owners don't bring their cat to the vet. You know, we have a product, you know, it's really important for osteoarthritis, Silencia, but a lot of people won't use it because they just are too nervous with their, you know, cat getting it to the vet. So products like Celio for dogs and Bond Cat for cats are critical. All right, excellent. Now, uh, the dermatology franchise, great as ever? Yes, we had 25% growth in Q1 with Apoquel, Cytopoint, and launch of Apoquel Chew. So no one, you know, everyone wants to make sure they can give them a beef-flavored treat um, and address their, uh, um, you know, their dermatological conditions. So it's been a great quarter for Derm. And I think it's important to point out, what was 
the standard of care before Apoquil? I believe you called the Elizabethan. The Elizabethan. <laughs> I think people have to recognize that it was medieval ages until your company came along with that great medicine. Yeah. Uh, now we do have. I mean, the first time I mean, we got a little competition. Uh, Merck's got a, a, a drug that sounds like you know for preventing fleas and ticks. Alanco's gotten a little bit. They got their balance sheet fixed a little. Uh, is it going to get a little tougher out there for Zoetis? Well, we saw, you know, a big competitor come um, in uh, Q3 of last year, and a lot of people were worried. We printed a 61% growth in Q1. So I think our performance speaks for itself. I think with Semperica Trio, Rev, Rev Plus, um, we really have a broad portfolio, and it's a billion-dollar franchise. As you know, Derm is a billion-dollar franchise for us, and so is Parasiticide. So I'd say we, uh, we're showing that we can uh, truly deliver because it's a phenomenal product. No, it has been amazing. And, uh, again, I just want people to understand uh, well, this is something that Walmart gave me. If 75% of the people uh, who have Walmart Plus have pets, how big are the number of how big is the number of homes that have pets in this country? It's immense, and I think really, as you look at many millennials and Gen Z are having pets versus having children. And they see these pets as important members of their family. And high-income households are having multiple pets. And they want to take tremendous care. I mean, you and I joke, you know, 20 years ago, they were in the backyard. They moved to the sure. house. They're definitely on your bed. And some of them have a stroller these days. So, you know, they want to take the best care of these pets. And I think that's really what helps drive companies like Zoetis. We have innovation to bring, and we're there for those pets. Absolutely. Well, that's why I was surprised that the stock is down double digit, because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think that there's a lot of confusion maybe at post-pandemic. People aren't adopting pets. We took care of that. You've got a lot of great new products. It's uh, it's very clear to me that uh, there's no real price competition because the other guys still don't have it going. I think it's going. science and innovation. I mean, yeah. if you bring innovative products that change the, the life of a pet and therefore change the life of that family, pet owners are willing to pay for Any great amount. innovation. Any amount. Okay, that's <laughs> Kristen Peck, CEO of Zoetis. Long a recommendation of, of ours, even from when it was spun off. Yes. That's when we first liked it. Years ago. We have money's back at the break. When we return, master the markets one stock at a time. The lightning round is up next.